again playing Thursday night. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, we talked about the game already and, and some of the stuff that we liked and some of the stuff we want to work on, and then had a, some extra time to rest, an extra day to practice and lift, an extra day to get on the road recruiting. Uh, but all in all, just all the focus, the entire focus is on just getting better and progressing as a program with our players, both academically uh, and on the football field and the community, and just um, getting better at just playing harder, playing smarter, um, working hard to eliminate penalties, keep lifting up our grades, and uh, again, just progress. So that being said, questions please. Mark, what are the uh, challenges of preparing for a road game and a road crowd regarding the offense? The offensive line, and how are they doing in preparing for that? Well, I mean, the preparation and the, the process that goes, all, or all the process that go into preparation for going on the road, the only difference is the plane ride, you know, really, because over the, um, in the offseason, the operations director, they do a great job just scouting out the right or the most proximal hotels that have the space, the, um, the conference rooms, whatever we need to meet, to walk through. Um, Sometimes we have to have mobility circuits if it's a later game to get the guys up in the morning and make sure they're just not sitting there stagnant and um, whatnot. So for us, it's um, you know, you've heard it for a hundred years about how all road trips should be a business trip. You know, home games are business trips; they're just local business trips. You know, and that's uh, the mentality for this is that is we need to go play our best football. You know, we see progress; we're getting better. That's all we're focused on. Your crowd noise. I, I don't, I'm not sure how many people show up for the Temple game, but. Crowd noise in particular? Always, we're always prepared for everything when we go on the road. Seems like their quarterback does a good job of getting the ball out. What type of challenge does that pose for a defense when you face him? Like well, it's not only that he gets it out, he gets it out to the right person. Uh, he's, an, he's an excellent quarterback. He's really well coached, obviously, lineage there, right? He's um, just really sharp, really accurate, you know, and um, he understands front structures, he understands the back end as well, so he is finding windows really effectively. He's getting the ball out. Um, and the offensive line does a good job protecting him as well, because it's not just all quick game. I mean, there's some drop back, there's play action pass, and there's five, six, and seven man protection. So the old line, the backs, the tight ends, I mean, everybody involved in protection and the scheme itself is challenging, you know, and they, they find the soft spots in your defense and, and they, expose, they expose opponents. Mario, I was listening to an article in the Athletic this morning about Shannon Dawson uh, and having one to kind of go for the jugular at uh, the end of the A&M game. Um, how, how important is that to you? Uh, how much do you like that we were interviewing him and hiring him, uh, that, that aggressiveness that he brings? Oh, it's, it's paramount, you know. It's uh, a DNA, uh, it's a trait, it's um, those positions, you know, require a guy that's a true leader, a guy that has confidence in what he can bring to the table and that instills confidence in the players that are playing in the system. And he, uh, he does an awesome job of that, and especially in games like that. You know, it's, you know you're not going to you're not going to air it out or you're not going to take the air out of the ball. You're going to have to keep scoring and whatnot. And there's no uh, there's no flinch. There's no hesitation in his play call. You went out on the road Friday. And I'm just curious, you know, with the encouraging results to this point, you guys are delivering our base. Are you sensing positive feedback from recruits, high school coaches, um, in, in relation to the results you guys have? Yeah, it's massive. I mean, it is. And you see some of the things that are going on. Uh, the momentum is real. Um, and the, the best part about it, it's, I mean, it's just beginning. You know, we're just starting to progress. We're still building. We're still working our way towards what we want to be. But um, the fact that they, they've gotten to see us get off to a strong start validates a lot. A lot of the stuff that we talked about through the processes of the guys that are coming out in 24, 25, and 26. So families get to see that, players get to see that, uh, local local coaches, it's great to see them. I mean, I, as an assistant coach, I spend so much time in this community just getting to know people, meeting people, um, having them at camps, you know, working with them. It was great to be out just kind of on my own, you know, and have my own uh, day where I could just stop in the different counties and see different games throughout the course of the weekend. So very productive um, and very exciting for us just uh, because of the feedback that we, uh, that we received, the reception that we received was really strong. We've been seeing the workload increase for Ruben Bain. How's he been handling that as a true freshman? How's everything coming along for him? Yeah, he handles it like a veteran. You know, the workload will continue to increase for him. And 
And you know, players that prove that they can handle it, I mean, he certainly has done that. A great offseason made that possible, right? He gained about 15 pounds of muscle, increased every part of, uh, every aspect of strength and explosiveness in his body. Um, his conditioning, we've ramped it up, knowing that he's playing more plays or whatnot. Uh, he's also, we haven't incorporated him in some of the special teams, but he is also a guy that serves as a reserve guy on special teams as well. So his play count will continue to go up. He can handle it. And you know what? He's impacting the game. He's not just a guy that's taking reps. He's impacting the game. Xavier Restrepo is up to a productive start. What, what impresses you about his approach? It seems like he's been a pretty big like, spark plug guy. Yeah. Yeah. Just tough. He's a grinder. Relentless about his approach to the game. Always finding work. Always. I mean, if. I can't tell you how many times practice is over, he's finding extra reps. Um, in the off season, he's training, and then he's finding more time to train. Back at home, always working his craft. Um, just a very driven, motivated guy, and you know, he wants to see Miami do well. Um, just a you know a true hurricane that wants to wants to do well, wants to see the team do well. And we're blessed to have him. He's playing at a really high level. That group in general, it's a lot of the same guys, right? They are definitely producing at a higher level this year. Yes. Without a doubt, a great offseason, um, an offseason along with their teammates, more time spent around the quarterback, the offensive line, uh, a new system that allows or provides opportunities for them to make plays. Their body's changing, right? The way that they move now, their ability to accelerate, decelerate, get in and out of breaks, jump, um, balance and body control is different. Um, and then a system that, and a coordinator, and a receivers coach, all those guys. Kevin Beard has done a fantastic job with those guys, you know, working along. He's got good analysts as well, and, and Coach uh, Coach Cooney and Coach Varner, um, and then Coach Dawson, of course, you know, the impact that he has had has been tremendous for those guys. So they're excited to play. They're excited to show up to work. And because we throw a lot at them. I mean, last week's practices, um, they might not have been as rigorous as a regular week practice, but it was hard. We made it hard on purpose. And they're showing up with an appetite to get better. So that's a really good sign as to, hey, we, we want to be good, and we know we got work to do. We're nowhere near where we want to be. Mario, uh, Temple's an old uh, Big East uh, conference, uh, conference mate with Miami. I looked up this morning, uh, saw you playing in some, I think, in 92, and then coaching in 7 05. Um, so any memories of you know, being conference mates with them, going against them? Memories against them? Just yeah. always a really tough team. Always had really physical players, well coached players. Um, you know, in that part of the country, haven't spent time up there working at, at Rutgers and then just recruiting that area at the different stops. Always impressed with the caliber of football, the caliber of coaching. And um, they've got a really good staff. I mean, these guys are well coached. They play hard. I mean, they get 11 hats of the football on defense. And on offense, they'll try to knock you back and finish it. You know, and if you're just kind of loafing around downfield, you're going to catch one, you know, right underneath the chin. So these guys, um, my memories with them, obviously, we. Uh, Got a, got a chance to play against them. And again, just really, always really good football players, always. I want to ask about Jaden Cohen. We haven't asked you about him yet this season. How's he performing to this point? And I'm curious too, like, because of where he was at previously, mm -hmm. how much does that mentality that he learned there help you guys here with knowing how to handle success and, and whatnot? Um, well, I mean, he's performed extremely well. He's been awesome. and. Uh, you know, a lot of times, offensive linemen, you don't, the right, only time you hear about them is when something doesn't go well. I think it's be great for you to watch tape to see how physically uh, dominant he has been on so many occasions. And then um, I think it's a testament to him, it's a testament to the culture here, how much, but you got to ask him, you know, it, but how much he enjoys the challenges, the way we push him here, um, the building process here, you know, after being in a program that had won. Um, you know, for so long, I think uh, I think you'll find some really good stuff there. You know, and, and but his contribution as a teammate, as a player, as a performer has been has been awesome. It really has, and I think his best football is ahead of him too. You know, best part about him is you can push him. You know, you can push him. You, you feel he's getting a little bit, you know, a little bit lax in the technique. You can get right after him, and he responds really well. Uh, awesome, awesome human being, and blessed to have him here. He's uh, he's gonna keep kicking butt. Coach, on Thursday after the game, Tyler said how much he's admired the Russia and Emory is a true freshman. And after fall camp entering, 
early portion of the season. How have you noticed that relationship has benefited each of their production, this expansive offense under Dawson? Well, I think Coach Dawson has had a tremendous impact on all the quarterbacks, Jakari as well. And, uh, you know, to your question with Emery, yeah, it's, it's been a ton because Emery, when he got here, you know, come springtime, it was, it was a lot, right? Coordinator change, a lot of different things going on. Um, new place, right? First time away from home. So that's, that's a lot coming out of quarterback. But I think both him and Jakari have done a great job taking, the, taking on this system, uh, taking ownership in the system. Just making plays out there. If you watch those guys in practice, you'd feel really confident anytime their number is called or, or if their number had to be called because of how they're performing. They're just they're uh, they're ahead of their time a little bit. And again, those are two other guys that we feel they're the best footballs ahead of them too. At what point did you notice Van Dyke and, and Henry really gelled together on practice to the point where they were just knowing each other from back there and they were to really feed off each other in production? Mm -hmm. At what point did I? Did you realize that that relationship really formed, that bonds generate between them and the practice field? Um, I mean, it's kind of just been forming. It's, it's naturally evolved, very organically just kind of come about, you know, and I think you're seeing that in different spots on the team. We, it's our job as leaders to continue to, to foster that, you know. We have to, you know, as you get deeper and deeper into the season, right, your, your body, you know, you feel a little bit more and it gets a little bit more challenging and, what not, and uh, the tighter you are, the better chance you have for success. And we're certainly pushing the envelope as it relates to anything and everything related to team and connecting. Mario, uh, Jaden Davis, you know, didn't get you in here in spring, you know, got here in the summer and went through fall camp. How did he kind of uh, learn the system, learn the culture, and basically learn it well enough to be playing so well for the first few games? Yeah, he's a stud. I mean, just, he knows the ball. He was born and raised in profession in the industry, um, with his father being a coach for such a long time, uh, complete professional in the way he approaches everything. Uh, he is a great athlete, you know, and he has a natural sense for, very instinctive, just a, a very natural sense for not only the passing game, but for formations, motions, understanding splits and what they mean as it relates to, you know, certain down and distance situations. So, um, and he's an awesome human being. You know, again, that, that's a consistent theme, right? The guys are doing really, really well. He fit right in. I mean, it's, and I'd say more than fit right in, he's become, you know, he does do a good job leading, you know, uh, and he hasn't been overly vocal, you know, maybe because, again, almost the novelty, the newness of, you know, just arriving, but um, I, you couldn't ask more from a guy than what we have gotten from Jaden. And um, another guy that just brings it every single day, so smart. Such a smart player, man. You know, it's a it's a pleasure to be around him every day. Jaden Wayne seemed like he had an elevated role with some mm -hmm. of the guys being out in the last game. How did he perform? He did well. He did well. We threw him out there. He got a lot of reps. And, uh, you know, Jaden had a great spring, and he was doing really well. Then he got sick and dropped some weight and then was gaining it back throughout camp and is now just trying to fill in and, and start looking like himself. Uh, he played the run really well. He put some pressure on the quarterback. Uh, did a great job. You saw him dropping the flat and making that open field tackle. That's, that's a big move for a guy who weighs 245, 250 pounds. So uh, just a, a very promising career for him. Uh, really impressed with what he handled, how much he handled as a freshman, and that uh, his workload will continue to increase. All right, how's Cam Kinchin doing, and what's the timetable for his return? Yeah, he's doing well. Now, all the guys that were, that were not available for this game, they're all on the mend. And we feel good about those guys uh, this week and the coming week. So we'll have more details as the week goes on. How about Jaden Harris? How did he play? He played well. He played well in his first start. You know, you can tell he was a little bit nervous at first. Man, he's a very detailed guy. He cares a ton. He works really hard at it. Um, and he, uh, once he got the jitters out, he, he performed really, really well. It's carried over to two days of practice where you see a lot more confidence already. And again, his role will continue to increase, you know, on, not only on, on, on defense, but on special teams. And he brings a lot to the table. He's one of the fastest players we have, you know. So, and a great young man, so really happy for him and his success so far. With, with Cam being out, was more put on James in terms of uh, communicating on the back end? And yeah. if so, how did he do the Well, we put, we put a lot on James regardless, um, just because he's performed at a high level. I know Coach Gittery trusts him. Uh, and he's playing really well, 
you know, he really does. He's got a lot of energy. He brings it. Uh, he's continuing to evolve in the system as well. There's a lot of things that Coach Kittery hasn't called yet uh, that we're looking forward to involving James in. So, all in all, he just he had a he's playing at a really high level, practicing at a high level, and so there'll uh, there'll be some more stuff for him. Thank you guys. Appreciate you. Have a good day.